right. Amen. Amen. All right. So we are here to celebrate Mother Ethelene Green. Uh, we are. This is a lady easy to love and a wonderful spirit as we come and as we celebrate uh, her on this day. And so we thank you for all of those in Zoom land who could not be here, but we're gonna make sure we make it as if you were here physically. And so we'll do right by you there, amen. So we are gonna follow our program as is printed and for our, uh, for our uh, people online, we'll have uh, our prayer scripture readings and then we will have the ritual from the ushers, a, a musical selection, obituary reading, and then we'll have resolutions, reflections, uh, musical selection, and then uh, eulogy. And then we will have a final viewing and then process out as we prepare uh, for the final uh, burial uh, at the cemetery. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh, how we love you and how we thank you for the opportunity right now to be able to celebrate your child. Lord, we thank you for bringing us here into this moment. And we pray, God, that you would give us the strength and give us the endurance in order that we may be true to this moment of grief, but also to this moment of joy. We pray, God, that you would uh, cover this family, that you uh, give them strength and power uh, in the midst of this challenging moment. And we pray, God, that we could uh, have the same uh, power and strength as we not only say uh, farewell, but as we move into a new section in our own lives. So Lord, we just thank you. We know you do it. And we give you all honor and praise. In the precious name of Jesus, we all said, amen. 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 We'll have scripture readings by Brother White. Amen, church. Amen. We will have an Old and New Testament reading. We'll be coming from the 49th Division of Psalm, verse 15. For those of you have your Bibles, I'll give you a minute to get there. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, for he shall receive me. And our New Testament, Scripture is coming from St. John, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. May the Lord a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Amen. We will now have the uh, usher ritual. State and the National United Church Association of America Incorporated. We extend our deepest sympathies to you on the loss of Sister Evelyn Green as the Lord has caused another soldier off the battlefield here. 
People's recently celebrated their 79th uh, church anniversary of being here. And Sister Green was a member of this church for 75 years. Amen. I don't have the facts and figures about how long she was in Earth, but I'm sure she spent many hours, I mean, many years serving here as doorkeepers in this church here. And she'll be dearly missed. I do, I was told she attended a lot of the state conventions, mm -hmm. national conventions there. And I know for a fact that she was an arts and crafts chairperson for our state here. And she got my wife involved in that heaven <laughs> So it's our prayer for you that the Lord continue to comfort you as you mourn the loss of your loved ones. Amen. We will now perform a ritualistic service here. Sister, have you found anything that we can use to memorialize our departed member who practiced this prayer? Yes. I hold in my hand a pair of spotless white gloves which denote the purity of her life and the willingness to serve humanity. Amen. Sister, have you found anything in your search that can serve as a reminder that she who has passed into the South lands a little sooner than we once served in this detachment of God's army called church churches? Yes, I hold in my hand a gold pen worn by our sister at the National United Church Ushers Association of America, which shows that denominational barriers have been broken and church ushers of all faiths are united in one band of Christian love. Brother, have you found anything that we can use as a memento that she who has acknowledged the supremacy of death once served in the house of his holy temple? Yes, I hold in my hand an emerald service in the house of God, a badge of a Christian usher. Oh, Amen. Amen. These three mementos of faithful service, which I shall deposit into this arm, shall forever remind ungrown generations that our departed sister spent a life of service in the house of God. Amen. Sister Green, she fought a good fight, she kept the courage. It is now Amen. time to call her uh, to rest. We shall now call her off the floor for the final time. Amen. We thank our uh, we thank the ushers for doing that, and we also thank just the service of Mother Green for all what she did, uh, standing on uh, standing on that door uh, for the years in which she did. We're now going to have a musical selection, and following that musical selection, then we will have Sister Ruth Penn Griffin uh, with the obituary reading. Amen. Just bear with me one second. Amen. 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 Of course, my computer wanted to. <laughs> I can turn anyone into a beach bomb.
Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm Ruth. I am Kathleen's great granddaughter. My grandpa was Richard, and my mom is Rose, and my auntie Joyce. <laughs> Ethelene Green was born to Lewis and Patsy Sturgis on October 11, 1922 in Woodenfield, Mississippi. By God's loving design, a legacy was in the making. The legacy would build and change a family forever. Ethelene gave her heart to the Lord and joined the church at age nine. She loved being a servant in God's house. With the gift for learning geometry, Ethelene graduated from high school in Mississippi, even without school books of her own. She had plans to attend college when she met and fell in love with David Green. Mm -hmm. David and Ethelene moved to Bremerton, Washington, where they married on July 29, 1944, in Bremerton. Ethelene gave birth to her first child, Dolores, before the family moved to Seattle. In addition to David's son, Richard, the loving couple went on to have two more sons, Calvin and Marvin, and spunky daughter, Kathy. <laughs> While busy being an excellent mom, Ethelene worked as a nurse at Fort Lark Lawton Army Base in Magnolia, expressing her creative side. Ethelene made beautiful pottery and sewed lovely dresses and suits. Ethelene was a faithful servant at People's Institution of Baptist Church for 75 years, ministering as an usher and on the mother's board. She retired from Social Security Administration after her beloved husband, David, passed away on June 10, 2006. Ethelene pressed on with dignity and honor for 16 years. At age 99, Ethelene Green went to be with Jesus on March 21st, 2022. Left to cherish her legacy are her children, Calvin Sr., Sheila of Azusa, California, Marvin Evelyn of Renton, Washington, Kathy of Inglewood, California, 11 grandchildren, 21 great-grandchildren, Oh, she used to lie. <laughs> 24 great great grandchildren, nine great 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 grandchildren, and a loving host of nieces and nephews, cousins and friends. Ethelene was preceded in death by her parents, Louis and Patsy, husband David, son Richard, daughter Dolores, and 10 siblings. First Peter. 3, 4 says, a meek and quiet spirit is of great price in the sight of God. It is this spirit of Ethelene Greens that we will miss and treasure so much. Amen. We will now have uh, resolutions read by Sister Christina Turner. No. Now, you know, Christina was raised in this church. She wouldn't come up and walk across the front. She walked across in the back. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Good morning. First, giving honor to God, who's the head of my life and worthy of all praise. Uh, to the family, I love all of you, even if I don't know all of you. Very close to many of your family members, and my condolences are with you. May God's comfort and peace also be with you. Amen. So I'm going to read a few resolutions. So I'm just going to I was running up here. Take a breath. <clears throat> this first resolution is from Faithful Central Bible Church. Resolution to our sister in Christ, Kathy Green Jones, in loving memory of your mother, Ethelene S. Green. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, yea, saith the spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Revelation 14, 13. We, the pastor, officers, and members of the faithful Central Bible Church, extend our heartfelt sympathy 
to the Kathy Green Jones and your family during this, your hour of bereavement. Our prayer for you is that your spiritual ears would be receptive to the calm and quiet voice of the Lord as he speaks his words to your spirit. For the Lord has heard the voice of your weeping and has had compassion upon you. He is with you and will give to you encouragement, guidance, peace, and joy during this time. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all who comfort, who comforted us in all our tribulations, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. 2 Corinthians 1, verse 3 through 5. Be it resolved that a copy of this resolution be presented to the family with the reminder that beyond the gate, your loved one finds happiness and rest. And there is comfort in the thought that a loving God knows best. Done by the order of the family of champions, Faithful Central Bible Church on this 21st day of April in the year 2022. In his faithful and loving service, Bishop Kenneth C. Omer, Minister PhD, Senior Pastor and Teacher, and John, Past John Paul C. Foster, Co-Pastor, again from Faithful Central Bible Church. Thank you, Sister Kathy Green-Jones for sharing that with us. Oh, thank you. Resolution, Usher Ethelene Green. Better is a day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Psalm 84:10. In his own way, for his own purpose, God has reached down into his army of Christian soldiers to pluck one of his soldiers. He called the spirit of our dearly beloved Sister Ethelene Green home to be with him throughout eternity. Whereas we, the ushers of Washington State, United Christian Church Ushers, UCCU, have suffered a great loss in the homegoing home of our dear sister, Ethelene Green, who was loved by all who knew her. We wish to express our gratitude, respect, and love for sister Ethelene Green. She served at People's Institutional Baptist Church for many, many years. Sister Green was a faithful member of the Washington State United Christian Church, Church Ushers and a dedicated member of the National United Church Ushers Association of America Incorporated. She lived a Christian life and has served her Lord well. Her loyalty to her church, her faithfulness to her family, and her kindness to her friends shall forever be a living memorial to her beautiful life. She has labored hard. Whereas Sister Ethelene Green departed this life on March 21st, 2022, and will no longer go about her Christian duties. We thank God Sister Ethelene Green was blessed to live to be 99 years young, amen. We mourn, but not as those who have no hope, but as those who expect to meet with her again in that other world beyond the horizon. We thank God for the time she was allowed with us. Therefore, be it resolved that we strive to emulate her magnificent service field life in every respect that we express our sympathy to, the, to her sorrowing family and present them a copy of this resolution. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 3 through 4. Humbly submitted by the officers and members of the Washington State United Christian Church Ushers, this day, April 21st, 2022, Phyllis Egan's Molina, State President, and Wendy Kelly, Board Chair. Amen. Amen. In mother of in memory of Mother Ethelene Green. Whereas it has pleased Almighty God to relieve from the labors of this life, rest for your loved one, Mother Ethelene Green, we pen this resolution. Whereas blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God, Matthew 5, 8. 
Sister Ethelene Green was called to the mother's ministry under Pastor Landry's tenure at PIBC, receiving the oath of being a mother of the People's Institutional Baptist Church, always being a mentor, prayer warrior, and sharing love with our church family. Whereas it is never easy to say goodbye to a loved one, but we trust in God and hold fast to the faith that he will keep us in perfect peace while our minds are stayed on him. The family of Mother Green can hold on to the memories, unconditional love, and her ability to instill joy to all those who knew her. Therefore, the Mother's Board of the People's Institutional Baptist Church desire to express our deepest sympathy to the family and friends of Mother Ethelene Green. Having been a faithful servant and good standing at People's Institutional Baptist Church until her failing health, she worked tirelessly within the PIBC church family with countless acts of service for the kingdom. We will miss her fellowship. Be it resolved that as we bow in humble submission to the master's will, we commend the bereaved family to the all wise God who sees all and knows every heart. And we pray that you rely upon the gracious Lord of heaven and earth for comfort at this time. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution is placed in the church archives and a copy is provided to the family of Mother Ethelene Green. Submitted this 21st day of April, 2022, in the year of our Lord, Mother Lucille Henry, President, PIBC Mother's Board, Reverend George I. Davenport, Jr., Pastor. Amen. Amen. People's Institutional Baptist Church Ushers Resolution for Sister Ethelene Green. Whereas God has called from his home and her dear family, Sister Ethelene Green, who passed from labor to reward unto a land far fairer than ours on Tuesday, March 21st, 2022. Whereas Sister Ethelene Green has been a member of People's Institutional Baptist Church for 75 years, and she was a faithful worker, not only serving as a doorkeeper, she was active and participated in other church ministries and served as the arts and crafts chairperson for Washington State United Christian Church Ushers. Be it resolved, we have suffered a deep loss in the homegoing of Sister Ethelene Green, who was ever faithful and a dependable servant. Resolved, our wise Heavenly Father has taken a true worker of his to be with him in a land more beautiful than she has ever known. And be it therefore resolved, she lived a true Christian life and has served her Lord well. Her service and dedication to, the, to her church, her faithfulness to her family, and her kindness to her friends shall forever be a living memorial to her beautiful life. She has labored hard and long, and the Lord has promised her rest. Be it further resolved that we strive to emulate her beautiful service-filled life in every respect, that we express our sympathy to her sorrowing family and present them a copy of this resolution with the reminder that Jesus, the man of sorrows, understands all that transpires in human experience, and that he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Also our Lord said, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted, Matthew 5, 4. Respectfully submitted April 21st, 2022, John Radford, Usher President, Reverend George I. Davenport, Jr., Pastor. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I always say when there are a lot of resolutions, that means the person did a lot of work. <laughs> they were what we call in church busy. Yeah. Amen. And so we praise God for that and uh, for that. That's how we all knew her, by her work. Amen. Let me tell you, family, that there are 21 uh, participants logged in on Zoom uh, to be with you. And uh, there may be two or three people in each window. We don't know. But uh, we're imagining between 20 and 30 people who couldn't be here uh at least with zoom could come and join you amen amen praise god for that okay it is time for reflections and uh, i don't know why we make the small print says two minutes 
It's like you don't want us to see it, but you want us to see it. Amen. All right. But as the pastor, I'm going to have to give you two minutes. Amen. And um, so if you hear me say amen, that means you got to wrap it up. If you see me stand up, you're done. All right. All right. Now you got to work with me uh, as I'm going to work with you. You can't tell it all. Amen. All right. So we're going to give you the opportunity right now to be able to come and express about Mother Green as you so are led. Hello, everybody. I am Ethelene Green's baby daughter. I'm the baby of the family, and I say thank you all for coming. I'm up here now just to tell you how incredible my mom was in her very quiet, stealth-like way. <laughs> I have two incidences that I would... I, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, there are two incidences that I remember very clearly um, growing up. One was when I was in kindergarten and the Black Panthers were doing their thing, say it loud and black and I'm proud. I was in kindergarten and we were not supposed to be talking and the teachers were going to tape our mouth and we were not supposed to chew gum and I did both. So um, instead of them just putting a piece of tape over my mouth, they wrapped the tape all the way around my mouth and they put the gum in my bags and I had to walk around school. So when my mom went to open house that night, she went up to the teacher and the teacher goes, oh yeah, you, you remember, yeah, Kathy was talking, yes, she was. And she apologizes for that and she was chewing gum, which is definitely a no-no. My mom said, that is correct. And very nicely, she went up to her and said, if you ever do that again, you have never seen black power. And she, <laughs> and she smiled and walked away. Never would have thought that from my mom. And the second incident was when my when women could not get credit and um, everything was in Mr. David Green. And so my dad got upset and said he is she that was not her name. And he went and changed it to Mrs. Ethelene Green. So one day we went to get tires at Sears, which he had been there like for 40 years. And his card was declined and he didn't understand why. And he said, oh, it says here because you're, it was inactive, but there is a Mrs. Ethelene Green that is, and you are authorized to use it just like you did. You shouldn't have two counts open. And he just didn't know what to say. And she went from there and got all the credit cards she wanted. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my mom, very quiet, but he had suggested it and she was very subtle about getting all the things that she wanted. So I'm just saying she was very quiet, but she was very stealth like. <laughs> That's it. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Evangelist Joyce Green. And my grandmother, the sweetest grandmother, when I was a little girl, my grandmother on my mother's side wouldn't let us go to grandpa's house. And my grandpa <laughs> came over to Mother Bird's house and told her, these are my grandkids like they're yours. And we never had a problem. Because <laughs> when grandpa said something, he meant that. And my grandmother, we used to have so much fun. I used to hate to go back home. I just enjoyed myself. So she was the sweetest person. And as I got older, see grandpa liked you to work. You didn't work? Okay, he, he ain't got time to talk to you. Here. So he always asked me, Joyce, what you doing? I said, you know, I'm still a nurse. I'm still a surgical tech. You sit down, talk, talk, talk. Then I started coming over with my video camera and start videotaping 
my grandfather, my grandmother. When she saw me coming, she'd run and go, oh, and my hair. I go get my hair. Don't videotape me yet. Let me go get my hair. I said, Grandma, are you still pretty? Now, that's the only grandma I have ever known. So for people to say anything else, I didn't know no other grandma. That was it. But as I got older, I knew another grandma. But this grandma was my grandma. I don't care where I am or what. That was grandma. And she knew these was her grandkids. So that's it. But she was the sweetest person. Every time we go, what you need? What you want? We got, we got to think, Grandma, we all right? And she made sure, you know? And I loved her so much. And she loved me. I got pictures of her hugging me, and I'm hugging them. I just love that. I got videotapes maybe one day I can share. But God bless you. morning family and church family my name is Simone and um, Ethelene was my grandmother uh, dad I'll say dad is my dad of course <laughs> Marvin is my father <laughs> Evelyn is my stepmom and I'm standing on behalf of my mom Veronica she's out there on zoom land um, so she was a teenager when she met Lean and she was like a second mother to her she was unable to be here she wanted to send her love to everyone. And she wrote a little tribute. I didn't know my mom was a poet mm -hmm. until now. So she would like me to read it for you. Lean our queen, my lean, so close, but so far away. I felt our love each and every day. Each day brings joy in the way you loved our family every day. You cared, shared, grinned and glared to make all of us aware of life's great joy and laughter from now and forever after. I love you, Lean. You are our angel and queen. Rest in heaven, our shiro. I love you forever and a day. God bless our family always. From my mom, Veronica. Amen. Well, I'm uh, Willie. Uh, Ethelene Green's oldest grandson. <laughs> well, uh, I have a, you know, there's tons of stories and, and I can say, but the thing that I love my grandmother most for is that my wife, uh, Margaret, uh, who's half Asian, for those of you who don't know, <laughs> when we first went over there to meet my grandparents, I nudged my wife into the kitchen. <laughs> And my grandmother showed Margaret how to cook black style everything. <laughs> and, and you know, that that is, is really, it just means a lot to me. Not that she taught her to cook, that she loved who I loved. Yeah. And she yeah. didn't have anything to say about it. She just loved her. And I, I just remember my grandmother uh, in the kitchen uh, singing sometimes, mm -hmm. uh, or, that was just her zone. That was her office. She'd walk back and forth out of that kitchen, get you in there and give you a little bit of wisdom. Mm -hmm. But my wife learned to cook from my grandmother. Mm -hmm. That just means a lot. Thank Amen. you. Good morning, church. Good morning. <laughs> I am Rose Green. I am the eldest grandchild. <laughs> First niece. <laughs> First one. And that's awesome. You know, I just, I'm just so grateful that I'm here honoring my grandmother. When I would tell people that, you know, my grandmother this or my grandmother, they said, you still have a grandmother? Yes, I do. And she is no joke. She was a quiet spirit, strong. Every every office that she that she opt into, she did it to the very very best. Wife, whew, 
and my grandmother wasn't just easy. <laughs> Wife, mother, grandmother, aunt, cousin, whatever it was, she made each and every one of us feel special. And I was one, I was, I, oh, thank you, Lord, hallelujah. I was the one that ventured out so far, gone. But my grandmother accepted me. I don't care when I would come by. It was all right. And they wouldn't follow me around the house. They wouldn't, woo. Yeah. They loved me unconditional. Yeah. 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 And my grandma, my grandpa, he was something else. You know, when I was out there, I, um, I would call to let him know I'm still around. I'm still here. I call him. I say, hey, grandpa, how you doing? He said, hey, how you doing? And I said, I'm doing good. He said, you got a job? <laughs> and look, he didn't mix words. If I said, no, grandpa, I don't have one. He said, well, I love you. Ethelene in there. He didn't want to talk no more. He said, if you don't have a job, you're doing something. You ain't got no business. And he wasn't having it. But I was able to, the Lord turned my life around yeah. and let them see, hallelujah. Yeah. God is so awesome. They see me at my worst and they see me praising God, hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Giving back, yeah. yeah. And I'm here to yeah. honor my grandmother, hallelujah. Oh, I'll never forget how awesome, perfect, just about every, I mean, we can't say perfect, role model in everything she did. She was quiet, but she, my grandpa, her and my grandpa was up. Woo! I said, don't you take, don't you get it twisted. She might not be saying da 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 da, da, da but she's in Whatever he's got going, she's in it. She knows all about it. Yes, we're going to miss her, but I'm so grateful. I'm going to see her again. My life is right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm going to see her again. Grandma, I love you. Matriarch gone, but never forgotten. Oh, my God. She left a legacy. I'm telling you the truth. <sighs> my heart is happy. I'm a mister, but my heart is happy. Because yeah. she's saved. She's a hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you all. Hallelujah for being here. I love you, cousins. I love you all. Aunties. All of you. Grandma said, love them all. She was a quiet spirit. But she was strong. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Oh, Simon. Um, my name is Marquita. I'm one of the grandkids. I used to come here. I used to usher with my grandmother. Mm, cousin. Yeah, you did that. <laughs> One thing I can say is my grandmother was definitely amazing. Um, this trip has been even more significant than I thought. It's been a celebration. It's been an eye opener for me, for me to just know, I already knew, but for me to know like this, amazing. Our lineage, our heritage, everything about my grandmother and my grandfather together as a unit to see them be together as long as they were, to truly love, to teach us how to love. It's not very many people out there that truly love, but we know what it is, especially when we see it. So I thank God for this moment. I thank God because my grandmother, looking at the pictures, grandma stayed sharp. <laughs> she stayed sharp. She taught me how to sew, taught my mom how to sew. Grandpa used to get mad because she would go out to sewing class. And we would go together. I have this red pillow. 
that we made together. I still sleep on it to this day. And me and my daughter, we kind of argue about it. <laughs> and I'm like, Grandma, she wants my pillow, so now I have to make her her own pillow. <laughs> But I love it. I love my grandmother. I thank you. I probably got my dimples because I realized my cheekbones are just like hers. <laughs> Stay smiling. I love you, Grandma. Mm. Came in sharp, but went out short. Right? Yeah. Mm. And I'm trying to pick up that characteristic of being quiet because I got my mom's traits and I'm loud and, and proud. I'm, I'm Kathy Green's daughter for real. But thank you. Hello, and thank God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, for making a place in their heart for my mother to go home to. My name is Marvin, mom's third child. I was the youngest for nine years until she decided to <laughs> have one more. There's only a few things I'm going to say of the million that I would love to say. I was a young lad about six, and my mom was looking out the window of the screen door, crying. And I said, you know, I stuck to her like scotch tape on a window. <laughs> and I said, mom, why are you crying? She says, well, my mom passed and I have to go down south to bury her. I said, well, what are you gonna do now? She says, well, she's always in my heart. I'm gonna do what God says and remember what my mom said. I said, I don't understand. She says, God willing, one day, I won't be here. Uh, no, Mom, you'll always be here. <laughs> Took about 70 years. I found myself standing up, looking at the screen door, sobbing. Summons quietly, and I praise God. I had almost seven years taking care of my mom, yeah. and I tried my best. I tried my best, and I told her many times, I said, Mom, I'm scared. I don't know what to do. You trust in God and just remember I love you. Yes. And you'll make it. And she, she's a cheater too, by the way. <laughs> we went to all the problems that she had. She'd help me, I'd help her. And one day, I guess. The Lord called her home and she figured I'm gonna just go in my sleep. <laughs> no, I couldn't get back at her. <laughs> but I loved her so much. She taught me so much. Yeah. And I promised her. I'm really a gentle person, but I told her that 
I'm going to get tough now. <laughs> and the last time I told her that, she smiled. She said, you're lying. It's okay. <laughs> That's my mom. Okay, I'm better now. I'm Calvin, her oldest boy. <laughs> There's a couple of things I want to talk about, Mom. Mom loved to cook. Yes. To me, her favorite meal was always homemade biscuits. Mm -hmm. I'm the only one who still has a recipe. <laughs> <laughs> but Mom used to allow us to invite our friends over for school from school. And they would come and they'd line up. I can hear to that door and we sleep on the floor and mom would be in the kitchen and I hear that oven door open and a pan of biscuits would go in and other door open and a pan of biscuits would come out. We just ate biscuits after biscuits after biscuits. <laughs> and I pass it on to my family. I said, but I want you to share that. But this was the most important thing to me about mom and her transition. She used to work at Fort Lawton as a practical nurse. She came home one day and she said, uh, that they're gonna get rid of her, kind of. And she said she had to find something else to do. And I said, well, what you gonna do, mom? She said, God's gonna lead me. And so uh, she went and bought one of them uh, typewriters. I don't even know who made it, but pushed the button down. And she said, she taught herself to type. Yeah. I said, good God. Fill out an application. We're going start, to start working for some administration in the government. And I said, well, Mom, how'd you learn to type? She said, God taught me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She said, whatever you want to do, you said, you ask God. And being the oldest boy, I didn't know who God was. I thought I did. <laughs> but I didn't. I had no concept of who he really was. But I got a taste of it when I would come to the church right here. Reverend Penick was the pastor. And back then they had ushered, but they pinched. <laughs> and if you cut up, they was baptized and deputized <laughs> to pinch you. Not out the door, right where you sat. They pinched you, and then they would tell mama, and then mama would pinch me and she would tell daddy and daddy give you a whooping. <laughs> I'm not talking about this. Daddy had a belt that went from here to that usher, that deacon right there. And it would just, pow! But mama knew that one day I was gonna know the Lord. I was, I was a mess. But she stayed with me and every time I talk with her, she'd say, you praying? Yeah. And I was going, yeah. But one day I prayed. I remember my mom saying, you know him now. She's in heaven now. And the Bible says, now, now is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless in the presence of his glory, both now and forever. Be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. I love you, Mom, and I love all of you, too.
Amen. We will have uh, one more musical selection, and then we will have the eulogy. Amen. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Father in heaven, your child needs you now. I pray, God, that you would uh, give me your word that may be a blessing to these, to this family, to these grieving hearts, to these generations who have enjoyed and been blessed with the matriarch. I pray that what happens here can somehow help the grieving spirit and that in the midst of the sorrow, somehow find some joy. Lord, uh, I know you do it. You've done it before. We know you do it now. And we'll be careful to give you all the honor and the praise. In the precious name of Jesus, we all said amen. 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 Let me uh, thank uh, this uh, family for choosing us to be the host. <laughs> if you wouldn't have done it, I have a feeling Mother Green would have something to say about it. <laughs> so I don't, I'm not speaking as if you had a choice. <laughs> but thank you for avoiding her wrath. <laughs> uh, let me say that we, we stand with you as we said before uh, in the midst of this time. And uh, the more y'all talk about her, uh, the more it just stings on the inside of uh, what she has meant, not just to you, but also to us as a church family. Uh, that being said, uh, we need to uh, we need to close and uh, be true to what she would want at this moment, uh, a word, and then to be able to say farewell. Nehemiah eight ten says this. Nehemiah said, "Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks." and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, but the joy of the Lord is your strength. But the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. Let me preach from the topic. There was something about her smile. There was something about her smile. This scripture is one that is often quoted, but never found. We hear it, but we sometimes forget where it is. And quasi it kept, we sometimes forget how to use it. We have to find it to understand the contextual meaning and how we apply it. This scripture is a symptom one of encouragement as these men and women bore the responsibility of rebuilding their wall and their culture. If, if you have familiarity with Nehemiah, it begins with them weeping because they have returned from being excommunicated from their land in exile, and they have returned to see uh, their wall destroyed. They must now gather the courage and the fortitude to rebuild a wall against enemies who are still trying to hold them down. They recognize, church, that what they had gained, they had lost, and now they must fight to get it back as landowners and ensure 
uh, their place and ensure their stability as a nation. And so as you get to this chapter, the prophet Ezra, in the midst of their successes of rebuilding, uh, says that you must now worship. That all what you have been through, your joys and your sorrow, must now culminate into worship. But yet he was finding that within the worship that there were some who were still weeping and some who were still mourning. So the prophet is taking the stance that you must have joy. Right, right. That, that, that as much as it is this opportunity to mourn, you must have joy. And, and for us, family, it is the challenge in the midst of circumstances of building and rebuilding. And as family DNA gets adjusted from patriarch to matriarch to new generation, that we must find joy somewhere in the midst of saying farewell. It's a it's a it's an awesome task, as 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 easy as it is. And even the the DNA of this church, I'll get personal with you and I'll bring it home. Don't the DNA of this church has radically changed since I've been the pastor. Amen. And so as I confess to you and on Zoom, I sometimes tire of eulogies. Amen. But, 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 but as much as it is part of the job, it is also part of understanding the change and the challenge that comes about just in living together. And that there is in the midst of this, you've got to find some joy. Your, your mother, uh, grandmother, great grandmother, had this smile that could light up the whole room. Now, I want to be clear here that I drew to her. Uh, she was on the, uh, uh, her and Sister Dolores White were each uh, on the uh, pastoral search committee. So they won, ones are responsible for all this trouble, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> But Dolores White would be hard on a brother. Amen. Yeah. 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 But I learned something because she was on me one time and Mother Green said, Dolores, leave him alone. And she did. So I found out the secret to the power of Dolores White. A kryptonite was her mama. <laughs> so if I needed to go grab kryptonite, I grabbed it, amen? amen. Your mom's smile you could see from a mile away and it was contagious, it was and involuntary, she didn't have to force a smile. You walked into the house and there was a smile. It, it had nothing to do with whether life was hard or easy, whether she was sick or whether she felt better. It was all about just who she was. She could find a smile in anything. It didn't matter joy or pain, it's just she would light up. Not just for her, but for you as you came in and endured her. Now the smile had to be there obviously for life up from Mississippi uh, up to these parts of the country uh, in the old school Bremerton and that shipyard of coming all this way and raising family away from family uh, and being able to start generations up here uh, uh, that did not have the same 
experiences that they would have had in Mississippi. So she found uh, whether she be a nurse uh, and, and being a nurse, uh, there's a need for a smile, right? The, 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 the encounters that you have to have with people in the midst of their challenging circumstances, I could only picture what she brought to the room when she encountered the patients, man. There, 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 is, there is no way, there's no way here, a, a deacon, that if you work in, in social security, you're going to need a smile. Right? Right? Right. When, it, when it's about money and you got people that are seeking money that, that, they, that, that they know is guaranteed to them to the very cent, you need a smile up in that place. Amen. Amen. And you need it for the people demanding uh, their benefits, whether they're owed to them or not. <laughs> but you also need it for yourself when you're dealing with critters like this. Talk to me, somebody. Your, your mother, your, your grandmother, she had that ability that, 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 that there was a peace that could come among you as, as you deal with her. It was, it was indeed challenging. She could not come to uh, a, a church anymore uh, uh, due, to, you know, due to her health. And so we go and we visit her uh, uh, in, the, you know, in the house to serve her communion. And it was clear that, that uh, me and Deacon understood that we need to make this our last stop. Yeah. <laughs> because she was not going to work with our time frame. <laughs> right, right. This is the kind of house where you go to, where you start looking at the watch and um, you're about to, well, and then she'll say something that you go ahead and sit back down. <laughs> Y'all not about to hurry off, are you? <laughs> nope, we're not about to hurry off at all. But that kind of contagiousness made you, it was, it, it just made you want to be around her. It just brought, brought us into it. Said, look, 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 for, look, where better for her work in the church and the needed demeanor to be an usher? And usher has got to smile. Come on, so we, we've been giving our ushers a pass over these past couple of years because they can have a mask on. <laughs> Huh? Huh? They, but now when that mask comes off, now that, 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 that needed smile, especially as you deal with what's coming in through this thing, you got to have a smile. Well, to present the calm with a, a smile for members saying farewell to their loved ones, leading them in here. The smile was made for the door for which she stood with commitment until she could not. Oh, and then to be a mother, the smile needed to inspire our young, our young folks in church, to be a mother of the church, and then inspire them to be young ladies and young men. Or to find way to be an encouragement to folks who have lost, lost loved ones, or to seek to be a mother for those who were just in need of one at a time. That's what Mother Green could bring to it. And automatically, it was not a class that she had to attend. It was just natural in what she did and who she was. That's the smile. The smile, it was, I started off with, there was something about her smile. Yeah, that could bring calm. And, and, and it was when she showed that joy, that, that in that joy, we saw Jesus. That was it. That was it. It was it was the basis. It was the you know it was the source of it. There was there was no way even in the midst in which she when when she would take the communion there was a joy in that she was encountering the Savior who had saved and that even in her house and that she wasn't in the church where she had been for all those years she could still smile. 
Right, right. There, there was there was a time we would we would sit in the house. A uh, 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 brother, a uh, green can tell you. I would forget that I was there to serve communion. Right. I would forget. I would forget between between her pushing around her son Marvin. Green. This man was my senior, and he was getting pushed around like he was my colleague in my same age range. We was feeling the same way, right? That how we were being pushed around, but it was okay because she smiled when she did it. I hate it to see if she was beating up somebody as younger. I hope she wasn't smiling for that. I, I say this for you, family. There, there, are, there are ways in which time takes away memories, right? I mean, I, I, I don't say they take away memory, they just move them from the forefront, right? To where you will always, and, and, and the challenge as time goes on and you had your mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, great grand for a long time. I mean, Lord done blessed you with some, I mean, you can hold on to it. And first, I still don't feel like she was ready to go. I feel like they had to keep sending requests, okay? <laughs> Then she just said, all right, I'll go now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She turned, she'll turn God down with a smile. In your memories, if you forget something about her, don't forget the smile. If you light up, right? If you, if you, if you, if you, if, you, if that smile just lights up, you know that you have connected again, one more time yes, yes. with your matriarch. Yes. Don't let the moment take that away from you. Yes. Let it give more to you than what, than what you had while she was physically yes. here. Christ was more powerful in death. Yes. When he crawled, when, when Christ rose, he was more powerful at that moment than he could have been when he was walking the earth. Your mother is more powerful in this moment than when she was in that house, when she was in that hospital, whatever rehab. She is, she is in his grace and in his mercy. For that, we get to smile. Love on each other. The joy of the Lord was her strength. Yes. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes. Come on, let's praise God for Mother Green. Yes. Amen. Let me, let me call down these directors. What we are going to do is we are going to have a final viewing family, and we I believe the escorts are either here or they are uh, close to being here. And so we're going to, as the ushers guide you, uh, we are going to ask you to view and then go get in your vehicles and get ready to be lined up. We have a drive obviously out to Abbey View for our final, for the final resting place. Yeah. Amen. Let me, uh, if you don't know, let me thank uh, Sister Christina Turner. Yeah. Um, who's on this with Zoom. And then these ushers who have been guys, please.
No, ya no, no. Sí, no, no. 